Being a matchmaker can be hard. If the match isn't right, things can get ugly pretty quick. But when it comes to your blood, there's professional matchmakers who use science to get the match right every time. I'm Andrew Chapman, and today we're meeting our match right here in the lab. I'm here in the lab with Sally. Sally is the manager of the Blood Transfusion Laboratories. Hello, Sally. Hi, Andrew. Now, Sally, please tell me what happens in a blood transfusion laboratory. Well, there's three major things that happen here. The first thing is testing patients. We do the ABO and RH test here. You might know that you're O positive or A positive. We're the ones that do that test. And the reason we do that test is so that we can match this blood eventually for a patient. So the second thing we do is actually manage the blood products that we get from the Canadian Blood Service. We bring them in, we store them, and then we, when the patient needs them, we will get them out. So the third thing is actually matching the product to the patient um, by cross-matching, either in tubes or in the computer. There's many different ways of doing that. Well, that's pretty important stuff. Hi, I'm here in the Blood Transfusion Laboratory with Krista, who's a senior medical laboratory technologist. She's here to tell me all about cross-matching. What is it? So cross-matching is a test that we perform uh, to make sure that we're matching the donor blood to the patient and that we're not going to cause any adverse effects. We're basically matching the red cells from a donor with the plasma from a patient. Oh, wow. I never knew that. Huh. That's very cool. Now, what happens if you didn't do cross-matching at all? What could be the negative side effects? Well, you could end up giving a patient the wrong blood type. And if you do that, it can actually cause hemolysis within the actual patient and they can die. It's what? a very severe reaction. What's that big word you just said? Hemolysis. Yeah, what does that mean? So basically, hemolysis is the breakdown of red blood cells and it basically makes them burst. Oh my gosh. All right, Krista, so what's the next step in this cross-matching phase? So what we would do after we've added all of our reagents and our patient uh, sample into our gel card, we actually put it here into our incubator. Does that mean you heat it up? Yes, it heats at 37 degrees Celsius, and it's going to do that for, for 20 minutes. Why? Why do you have to heat it up? You want to bring it up to basically to body temperature, or pretty uh -huh. close to body temperature, so that it actually is mimicking what the reaction is going to be inside the patient's body with that donor unit. So after we finished our 20 minute incubation, we're going to take our card out of our incubator, and we're going to put it in here into our gel centrifuge. And it actually will come out looking like this. Okay, that looks right. completely different. Yes, so once it comes out, we get this reaction, okay? So what we have here is this one here, that's mm -hmm. actually a positive reaction. Okay. And this one's a negative reaction. So the negative reaction is, means that this unit is compatible with our patient. Okay. The positive reaction means there's something in that patient's plasma that's reacted with that donor unit and it's incompatible. So that incompatible unit, we're not going to give it to our patient because we don't want to cause a reaction in the patient. Right. And you can give the negative one. We can give the negative one because it is compatible. And it'll work fine. It'll work wonders. That's all that matters. That's right. All right, well, thanks a lot, Krista. And thanks to the Laboratory Medicine Program at the UHN. And if you want to see more videos like this and learn more about what goes on in the lab, please visit medlabprofessionals.ca.